Howdy peeps and peoples, hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Today we got the coolest fidget. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. We got a cool project we're gonna do. Let's get into it because I want to show y'all, I think you all's gonna like it. So first things first, let me explain what we're doing. In our sawmill, we're sawing hardwood mostly. Some of these clips are from pine, but the majority of the time we're sawing hardwood. Now hardwood is grayed off of clear face cuttings. That's where they're just graded basically off of defects. So you're trying to make a log as you cut it down into boards, you're trying to make it as pretty as possible. And uh, by playing some games, utilizing some of this and that and the other, you're adding to the, you're trying to do everything you can as the, as the log turns into smaller and smaller pieces. You're doing everything you can to increase the value of the log. Uh, to where the, the log you bought, you turn into the most expensive lumber as possible. You know, uh, legitimately, you know, not cheating, but through hard work. Now, the mill does the best it can do to, to get everything right. And it gets down to Alex and, and um, Rodney down here to the inspection station. And these guys, uh, what they're doing is they're doing the best they can to, to get these boards, to get the value on these boards the best as possible. So we're selling, and every board comes at different values. Now, a lot of times you can rip a piece off the board and... Uh, or rip a board into two pieces and create a higher value one half of the board and the other half of the board really didn't lose value or, or, or something to that nature. So this is our straight line rip and what it does is upgrades. Now watch out what kind of job this is. I'm not trying to dramatize this and this is actually hard maple which is pretty easy. So imagine this in long heavy red oak. Now, as you can tell through this situation, that what I'm doing is crowding the grater or graters, depending on the situation, with too much chaos because the ripping is being done right around them uh, and shoving boards and sawdust and stuff right back in their face while they're trying to actually make good grade decisions on the boards. That's problem number one. Problem number two is everything is awkward, unorthodox, everything's manual, everything's brutal. You're, you're, and when you get on long red oak or long poplar, it's just brutal. I mean, it's ridiculous. And then when it's raining, we have no cover for this operator. So when it's raining, you're in a rain suit or, or just getting drenched. You try to wait out the rain shower. So it's just horrible. It's a horrible situation to do to people. And I've been threatening to fix this for years. Uh, and that's Rick and Ball trying to help me. And, 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 and I am keep cramming him up his butt. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry, Rick and Paul. Love you, buddy. Oh, he's a good one. But uh, but I'm, I'm I'm trying to as I'm running this thing, I'm trying to figure out how can I fix this thing. And I think between me doing some brain scheming and thinking and dreaming, and then talking to all the operators and all the people, everybody in this grading room and a lot of people in the sawmill, I've had a bunch of conversations on what to do and i think all of us together has come up with a solution and uh it's going to take a little fabricating but i think we can get this figured out so let's go into the shop get set up and start building some things some conveyors and stuff and let's start getting ourselves an improvement it's about it's about quarter to six on a saturday morning Waiting on my boys to get here. They're gonna get here and help. Matt and uh, Michael's gonna help today. Good man. Uh, <clears throat> to get started on this, I'm gonna have to make two belt conveyors 
I'm gonna have to make two big uh, boxes, or we will rather. So them get leveled up. And the lighter stuff goes on these fixtures. And then we're making some heavy fixtures because I never did have a set of heavy low riding fixtures. And we're gonna use them beams. And this is what our little pieces are gonna be, our little feetsies. And Matt and Michael put holes in them. And this is gonna be our little pads, or coasters, to keep from sweating up the concrete. No, I'm just kidding. And then there's our adjustment bolts. So Matt and Michael's coming in to help make them today. <clears throat> Me, meanwhile, and here's our uh, steel sheets. They're gonna make our bunks. We're gonna have two bunks for this project. And me, I'm gonna work on these conveyors. Every component on the conveyor was found in, this, in the boneyard. So I gotta make sure all this stuff works yet. Here's my beltings, here's your two belt conveyors. Here's, and I'll get, Doug, if you watch this, I'm getting new belt. I'm just putting this stuff on here to get us up and running. And then once we get all the bugs worked out and the kinks worked out, then I'll order new belting. But I'm trying not to order a whole lot with these markets right now. <laughs> Inflation. I'm gonna set up, we got 480 in this shop. I got a 20 amp plug, which should pull, what, up to a five horse motor? And I think these are less than that. These are probably, that's probably a one horse and that's probably a two horse. But they'll pull up to, 20 amps should pull up to a five horse motor without popping the breaker. So I'm gonna make me an extension cord and uh, plug in these motors and see if we can get them working and make sure they work. And then after we get the belts built, I'll go ahead and stand them up in the floor like they're gonna go, plug them in, get them cranked up and running, track the belt, do all that stuff right here in the shop. So when we take it down there and put it on, we can hit the key and fire it up and go with it. Matt and Mikey's over there working on their, uh, the steady rest. Mikey slept in this morning, he was late. <laughs> he said, the, the one morning I sleep in, he said, you all finally show up on time. <laughs> So, I hooked up this uh, motor over here, just, uh, just to test it, see everything gonna work. I got a little wiring dilemma, I forgot all, I forgot me and Mikey figured it out though, but we did get it fixed. And then I got like an extension cord running my 110, and then I got the 480 running over the wall. It's got a 20 amp service, which this is probably not even drawing an amp. But there it is. So this one's running. Been set outside for a good while in the weather. Spins a little slow. It's 50 to 1. The motor's running 1750 RPM and the gearbox is 50 to 1. I don't know what that puts a grand total at. Uh, Let's do some quick hillbilly ingenuity. Okay, so the rip saw belt, the one that's out there, they're running is what I was actually gonna put that on, the belt coming out of the rip saw. It's got a 40 teeth driven sprocket. Okay, the motor is seven, let's do some hillbilly ingenuity to figure out what the speed is. So the motor's 1750 RPMs, gearbox 50 to one. So them two put together should come up with a 35 RPM output. Okay, now the, driv the driven belt pulley diameter is nine inches. So you're taking nine inches times 3.14 equals 28.26 in circumference in inches. And uh, I didn't write it all down here, but I broke that all into feet. And I figured I needed 85 driven RPMs to equal 200 feet a minute, which is just a stab in the dark. Uh, and then I come up with the fact that it would take a 16-tooth sprocket on the pulley. So I'm gonna try a 20, which will be less, it's gonna put me somewhere in the neighborhood 140 feet a minute, and the rip saw is like 120. The next one's the, four, the board feet on belt. Now I already got it all plumbed up, but I'm trying to figure out what I'm getting here, cause I would like to have closer to 300 feet a minute. The motor is 1165 RPMs. The gearbox is 24.7 to one. Eight inch pulley on the motor. Uh, 
I don't know, I can't see my writing there, but I got a six inch pulley on the gearbox uh, with a circumference of 18.84, blah, 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 nine and a quarter inch head pulley. Um, so the motor spinning at 2439 feet a minute. The input RPM on the gearbox is 1553. Uh, That's the that's the RPMs, okay. So the RPM output of the gearbox is 62.85. Didn't have that wrote down. I guess I had that messed up on there, but uh, I did some figuring on my phone and what it comes up with, 62.85 RPM with 29 inch circumference head pulley. It's gonna be about 151 feet a minute. Uh, I don't like that. We'll put it together and try it, but uh, Need to be around 200 feet a minute to get them boards spit out there. You'll see when we get towards the end of this. So I'm going to have to do more modification on that probably. But the other one's probably going to be fine. I want to come clean and tell y'all when I was putting this stuff together in the shop well me and Robin and Matt and Michael and uh, Rick and Ball we was building this stuff we were so into making all the dimensions work in my in my head I was trying to keep as much in my head as possible long story short I didn't get much footage building this stuff uh, I couldn't do it and stay focused and run all the figures in my pea brain and keep, get it all to come together and do much YouTubing. But I got a lot of the installation when, when the installation was simpler than the building of the equipment. So when I got to the installation, I could clear up enough cognitive uh, space in my head to where I could actually get to recording again. So all I got is a little bit of moving steel around and stuff. So all I basically got uh, the manufacturing of this stuff. But the installation was great. So we'll kind of get cover this, but mostly we're going to get installation. Hope you all like it.
are going to get the head pulley on and uh, the tail pulley on and I'm going to mount the drive on here and I freed up them beams back here because Rick and Ball and Matt think about getting started on their uh, box, the bin. So as you can see, Mikey's over there working on the uh, sprocket for the drive pulley on this uh, ripsaw belt. And I started working on the little belt close to me, me and Robin has. And that's going to be your feedback on belt. And uh, meanwhile, Rick and Ball's over there getting started. Matt ain't there yet. Rick and Ball's over there getting started with the, uh, there Matt there now. But him and Rick and Ball starting on the uh, bunk. So everybody's pretty daggone busy here, you know, the the bin, the big bin to dump the stuff into and everybody's off and going and uh, i know i ain't fully fully explained all the parts and pieces that's going together but uh kind of stick with me and you'll see her all come together in the end but just know we're this is good improvement what we're doing so uh let me get back to it all right i haven't recorded anything of this project harley and everybody's in here <laughs> so we're <laughs> so we're moving the rip down here this is where it's going to the saw line right here we got to move now this electricity used to run over here and we had these dip tanks out here and that's what these guardrails is about and stuff we had that where you can load the dip tanks and then the dip tanks sit on this concrete well we took them out i don't know why it's before my time but anyways we got the electricity over here from them which is great because they got two two sets of th uh, three phase 480 three phase so uh, we're gonna wire this up everybody else is enjoying their day oh we got a red oak it's been hard on this week okay so down here where we got a mount the rips on stuff i'm pulling out of the lines that i got i got two sets of three phase lines running back here uh i can't remember the wire size but anyways uh there's daybear he picks he picks on me all the time i love that kid good kid i call him the, the mr guapo he's he's good looking <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> but I gotta put a box in for the belt, and I gotta put a box in for the rip saw. And uh, I got a, I think a 20 amp breaker up above. And I don't know why it was done this way back when it got done on the dip tanks, but for some reason there's a 20 amp breaker up there and a big 60. And I think the rip saw requires 40 amps from the factory. Um, <clears throat> And the belt we're putting in, I'm going to set it up for a 20 amp because I want to prep it for a uh, five horse motor. Uh, right now it's got a three on it, but I don't think that's going to work long term. But uh, it was all junkyard parts, you know. I'll be back. What? Come on and be on your YouTube. Uh, you just said I'm definitely posting that. <laughs> that won't be on your YouTube. You never want to be on my YouTubes. You never want me to be on your YouTube. Who said I didn't want you to be on the YouTubes? Well, you never. You never put that in front and of your me. little dog too. I think I'll be on anything. I'll be on anything that ain't scaly. <laughs> that dog, a German Shepherd's like supposed to be bad apples. And that dog is the biggest chicken. They were playing Metallica yesterday and she was scared to she, drive the forklift with me. <laughs> she said she kept trying to get on the forklift with me. She said I had to put her in a put her away. Put her All right. Away. You can explain to people what your job is here. I don't know what the job is. <laughs> Isn't that nice to know? I am lockout, tag out, safety, safety girl, electrical safety person. Here's my tool. So your job is to do what now? Where's, um, where's the light? Can I demonstrate? Oh, and I was supposed to hold the flashlight. Yeah. I forgot. It'd be nice to see what I'm trying to do. Okay, should I be videotaping this? Yeah. Is this? So here's the cables coming in. That's how much power there is in here. <laughs> and on a rating of one to ten, I'll say. I'd say at least a solid two. Can Can I demonstrate what I'm supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, tell them what you're supposed to do. Just... Okay. So you didn't see my tool. That's mommy's tool. Uh, the four before. And then when he starts going, eh, eh, then uh, I guess we're just gonna take this. Oh, oh wait a minute. I can stand up like that. Okay. 
And then, see this, my tool, it's kind of heavy, and it, I'm afraid I might get splinters, but, uh, <laughs> so, I just gotta nudge him over here a little bit, but, well, that's Did about it. I guess, just a nudge, I guess, is that it's all it takes. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna knock him out. Every time he does something scary, he stands back and goes, ooh. <laughs> I need to clip. Did I bring tape with us? Is there tape here? I gotta walk up over there. Is there tape here? Um, Meg Otter's like, no freaking tape. Around. Usually we throw tape in the bottom of these. Really? Oh, hang on. Yeah, because I don't want to cut anything in. We found the wires we need. So why don't you tell everyone why you're doing this? Okay, well, we're hooking up the rip saw. I'm, I'm already on this project. Look for tape down there. I'll see. No. I bet Punch has got some over here. You can go check. Yeah, go find some tape. Here, let me have the... Let me have the flashlight. So we are hooking up the rip saw. We have two old leads that was the dip tank years ago, dip tank. And they are 60 amp breaker in a, uh, it makes no sense. There's a 20 amp breaker. They should be two 20 amp breakers with the wires that they're using. Maybe a 40 amp. But either way, that's what they're using. A 60 amp and a 20 amp. A 60 amp might be, so I'm gonna use this big leads, which is a 60 amp, I'm using it to pull the saw. I'm gonna put this light up here. So y'all got, and I'm gonna put my gloves on. So we got a little line of defense. These are, got a little rubber in them. This is Rick and Ball Electricity 101. He uses gloves. Okay, we're gonna need some tape on, buddy. I got some tape over here, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, some tape down here. So we're hooking up two separate leads. I don't know if this is smart because of what we're doing. 60 amps could actually kill. I could run like if I needed this breaker, I could do the whole rip saw station off this breaker. I think if that's legally kosher. I don't, I don't know what's totally legally kosher. I don't know. I'm not perfect. I'm not a. I'm not a freaking scientist, man. I don't know, man. So if that's the case, I can free up that breaker. These breakers are a pot full of money. Oh, I'm back. Did I miss uh, anything? You, I need to no, hit you the I board. Didn't get sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Why? Yeah. All right. I didn't know. Who's holding their flashlight over the camera? Here, <laughs> yeah. I, can, I can do a better job than that camera. Okay. No, camera. I don't think can see anything. You think the camera can yeah, see what you're the doing? Yeah, I think the camera's waiting. Here, let me check. Okay, um, okay, so no, here we go. Good. We'll take this tape. Okay. Take oh, tape, 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 So, we have three legs of 480, and uh, we got uh, one's going to be set up. Layman's terms, is that good? And so, and what, what is lamest terms? Is I don't know. Well, okay. 480, it's a 480. All right, look at your power line going down the road. You see three wires, right? Let's just go like that. Okay, yeah. See three wires up high? Yeah. And then one wire down low, there's always four wires. Okay. That's three legs. Okay. One, two, three. They all cycle. Two of the legs is always cycling together. They're on, off, 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 on, 60 times a second. That's how fast they're, that's called your hertz. And I, and I used to think hertz was just when you touch it, it hurts. <laughs> I was thinking, uh, you call, call hertz to come pick you up after you're left shooting. <laughs> okay. Well, let me have my snippers. Oh, blue, okay. Blue ones, okay. So, through the, uh, it might be an assistant. Through the on off, on off, on off hertz, in, an, in layman's, that's called alternating current. Don't hurt. Because it, it alternates from forward to backward or forward to neutral, 60 times a second, this mother trucker. Are you freaking kidding me? Is there anything else? Um, no. All right, hang on, let me try this out and get electrocuted. Fingernails? I don't know. Okay. So, they use them three legs. That's what gets your motor boosted up and running. Your, the magnetic field caused by the three legs. That, that it'll spit on, the motor goes to here, off, on, 
the layer oh. off, on. 60 times a second, that's what's going on inside an electric motor. It takes three separate legs to get that motor, get that magnetic field a snapping, you know, and that's what draws it around. So, uh, at any point, because there's three, triangle three, uh, they also call that delta. Uh, I think it's like the symbol for triangle or something if you're Egyptian or, mm -hmm, or something. You're right. Something like that. There's alpha and delta. All right, let me uh, fly ahead screwdriver. So anyways, when you want your motor to run in one direction, it's hooked up a certain way to get the motor spinning in one direction. If that's the wrong direction, you flip two leads and it'll get it spinning in the opposite direction because of the three, go on up, on up, on up, on up. I need to make See, on off right. is two is two things. So, but there's three legs. So there's always two legs together. You see what I mean? And through that, manipulating that, that's what gets your motor spinning the right direction or wrong direction. But each each leg has uh, 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 270 volts running through it. So each one of these wires is 270. You touch two of them, two of them together makes 480. It, it they piggyback on top of each other. Because they're never finding grant, you know, they're, hmm. nah, I don't know how to say that smartly. Have you ever me. had to save anyone with a 4x4? Four four? No. Hmm. I beat people with 4x4. Four four. <laughs> I just I figured that? with the attitude that you had towards me, I figured that was something that you wanted to do. So <laughs> that's a perfect job for mommy is to be the 4x4. Four because four, I don't know what I'm doing. It's working out. I just didn't want to be here by myself, mostly. Because mm. I'm doing something I don't want to be by myself. But nobody's down here. Okay, so here we go. You have to relabel that. Yes. Dip tank. We will leave these off for now. Which ones? Dip tank and dip tank. Oh, so there's two of them. So you'll be in charge of relabeling that if we get this project done because we have boxes that need to be relabeled and everything else. So the high voltage is done. We got the lead set up on our disconnect boxes down there where the thing Bob's going. And we are so, DUN done. So once we get the lure saw hooked up, all we gotta do is turn our juice on and we are ready to start ripping some Boads. So today is Tuesday, right? Tuesday? Tuesday. So we are on oh, par 12? I don't know what the date is. to get this project going. It's gonna be done by uh, Friday. Morning? I'm hoping to be ripping boards Friday on that thing. Here's this rip saw is set here, but it, I know it's been over 15. So we're getting ready to yank it. Jason's getting ready to yank it out the door, and we're getting ready to take the roll case out.
We like to have it on the edge, anyways. Hell with it. You only live once. You only live once. And sometimes not for long. and he's taking it up to the shop. Me and Dave Bear, we're gonna put this other one in. But I gotta set it in with the big truck and he's gotta back it in with the Nissan.
have to tell him everything. You know it? I told him I pretty much got to tell you everything. Huh? Now, if this wasn't running, he'd be a lot harder on me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you done? I'll start wiring it up. We can wire it up and play with it and decide where, 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 you know. All right, we'll go for a first test run. shifts on it it needs to run a little bit faster it ain't running quite fast enough i'm a little over 200 feet a minute but i need to be over 300 feet a minute dealer on and see where it comes and keep standing there. We're out this thing, this ain't quite out far enough. All right, as Wednesday comes to a close, I'm going to stop that here. <clears throat> I'm going to get uh, figured up to get me a bigger shiv, bigger drive shiv on the motor to run the gearbox, just overspin that gearbox just a little bit. It's got to be faster, man. It's too, it's too slow. It ain't kicking the board out there far enough. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Robin and uh, Mikey's up in the shop working on uh, the table the boards go on to feed the saw. And then Rick and Ball and Matt, tomorrow, they're going to start working on the, the bin. Or no, they already have, hadn't they? Yeah, tomorrow, no, yeah, they, they, we're in the next week. Okay, so tomorrow, Rick and Ball and Matt be back on the bins. Uh, uh, Matt is helping, uh, Mikey's helping Robin on the uh, the big table. We're going to feed all, feed the boards to the rips off of. Because when we get done, we're going to just be a big flat plane. Just go through there, and all you're doing is rolling boards through. So come back again, and we'll and we'll get and we'll get a little farther on this project. Thank y'all, everybody, for for watching all that good mess and uh, shirts and hats, loggerway.com and all that mess. And uh, don't forget to smile. Thank you guys. Later on. <laughs>